Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match stream. It's going to be starting off with a game between Clone and El Torero on Eye of Horus. And last time we saw Clone on this map, it was. it was long, and nukes were involved with a bit of interference, but they were involved anyway. I made it so. I don't know what's going to happen in this game. I kind of doubt anything that dramatic is going to happen, but we'll see. I didn't expect it to happen the first time. Right, let us begin. El Torero is starting out in the south as Light Vehicle Factory, while Klon starting out in the north as Klogobot Factory. Or with the Klogobot Factory, I shouldn't say as. The factories are kind of like factions, but they aren't actually factions, so... It's an important distinction. Anyway, Klon is starting out with one Glaive and Rector. Pretty defensive start, not at all typical for him. El Torero, on the other hand, is starting out with two darts, which is... A scout star, but a little bit more aggressive. It's still not that aggressive, given the cost of darts. He's not going to be losing too much. It's a little bit more expensive than one glaive, but it's also good to just know what's going on. So yeah, we're going to probably see El Torero go on this map for a lot of Scorchers. Though, with the glaives, he probably will stick to Scorchers for a while. He will switch to levelers at some point, no doubt, but for a while he'll be going for Scorchers, most likely, just because the size of the map. Raiders really work quite well here. And Scorchers do fine against Glaives, so I doubt that's going to be a problem. And... El Torero moving forward pretty re reliably. Clone is... He's moving his Commander forward, upgrading it. El Torero is actually going for Commander Junior, not even bothering with any upgrades on his Commander. He's... And like I said, Scorcher has no problem with Glaives. Anyway, Clone is going for... Bob the Shop, so Beam Laser. Probably was Beam Laser E-Cell, but hasn't switched off yet. Glaivebot Factory going for another Rector and five Glaives. Clone is starting to set up his raiding game. He does have a Defender set up and a Light Laser turret in the way that he loves to do it behind the power plants. So his main base is pretty well defended. It's a few Glaives, or rather a few Darts, are not going to be able to easily get in. However, at the same time, Clone is actually dealing a decent amount of damage, getting rid of one of El Torero's Metal Extractors, and that Glaive is actually staying nicely out of the way. Bit of a bad maneuver at the end, but still kept El Torero's units busy. The important thing was killing this Metal Extractor, of course. That Metal Extractor right here. The first Metal Extractor down of the game. And El Torero right now is actually not focused on rebuilding. He is getting another Metal Extractor. He is actually being very aggressive pushing it in the center. Clone is also pushing in, getting radar pretty quickly. And right now, Clone's radar is able to see barely what El Torero is up to, but... Yeah, he's not going to have an easy way of countering this, just with Glaives. Against Scorchers, Glaives are not the best option. They are a decent option, but they really are not... It's not easy to do with. If you have the right terrain, it works fine. And actually, going in the north, it would probably be okay. However, El Toro wants to see that Clone does not have anything set up along the west side of the map. Just wants to make sure the whole back side of the map is not taken up by any of Clone's economy, which it isn't. Clone's Focus entirely on the center, as has El Torero. Both players have. And now, battle opening up. Glaze actually dealing a fair amount of damage, getting rid of one of the Scorchers and chasing it away. Enough Glaze do get rid of Scorchers. And, I mean, Scorchers don't have splash damage, so it will take more than that to get to the line of Glaze. However, that's not been El Torero's focus. And, in fact, he is still behind economically. 16, medal of 13. Not going especially well. El Torero is, like I said, a bit more forward. And he looks like he's trying to actually lure Clone into some defenders. Not going to be successful in that. He's These Glaives are getting out of the way. Clone, however, continuing to build... Actually, going Glaives and Zeuses. Not a bad idea with the Zeus. Get out of the range of the Scorcher, which will probably pretty quickly push El Torero towards something other than Scorcher. Probably Leveler or Ravager. Maybe Slasher, actually. Although, honestly, even for the Zeus's power, Scorchers can die pretty well. It's just a matter of at this point, El Torero was even an economy. He'd be trading a lot for that. He'd be losing a couple Scorchers for every Zeus. I mean, it would kill the Zeus, but it'd still be kind of tricky to do. Glaive's coming around back, and they are not going to be able to deal a huge amount of damage. Going to try to get rid of this Defender. Not easily able to get up the hill, but also able to get away from the Scorchers. However, the Defender has time to reload. Gets another Glaive out. So successful defense on that side. El Torero and Clone are both doing a really nice job defending effectively. Though, Clone, he's... Okay, both players expanding along the west side of the map. 
neither player actually heavily defending the west side of the map, but neither player is too keen on attacking either. Clone did go over that attack, didn't work out too well, and the second attack, oh, that glaive, nice kill on the Scorcher there. But the last glaive is going to be, it's not going to work out too well, unfortunately for it. And that is, well, another successful defense by Clone. Players are really just starting to set at the center. Like the center of the map right now is... That's the center point. Both players have taken half the map. Pretty neck and neck for resources. El Torero was still slightly behind, but... For the most part, they are even. Clone, it looks like he is primarily benefiting from overdrive. This is the main way he's staying ahead at the moment. Although... Yeah, that's that's it. El Torero does not have the energy economy. He doesn't have the... His energy is not overflowing. So he can't actually overdrive at this point. If he's able to do so, actually, I think he would be ahead of Clone at the moment, though it's... Clone's economy is heavily based on wind generators, which are now just picking up, so... Clone's gonna have a nice little boon period. And El Toro, wow, okay, he is consolidating the center very heavily. Clone, not so much. He has a Lotus and a couple defenders, but that's about it. Zeus coming in is gonna try to get rid of these defenses, gonna try to get rid of these defenders here. And that will... Well, that should be pretty successful. The defenders run out of run out of ammo before the Zeus dies. Gets rid of one defender, but has to retreat. Unfortunately, not able to deal with the rest of them. And El Torero is going to be setting up... Well, no, he's still going for Scorchers. Has not decided to switch over. He is going pure Scorcher. Scorcher, oh, sorry. Scorcher leveler. He's getting a leveler. This will be able to actually get... Oh, these glaives aren't... A, oh, if that leveler went forward. El Torero does not... He does have radar coverage of this. He knows that the glaives are all in one bunch. Admittedly, Clone would probably move them out of the way once the leveler approaches, but still. That would be really devastating if he could actually get that. And the leveler is going to be in a great position. The glaives are moving forward. They are out of that bunch. They are into a line. I don't think... Well, we'll see if is paying attention to this. We do have the glaives coming in, and the levelers scare them away. Clone sees those and backs off wisely. The levelers would have chewed up those glaives... Probably no casualties, or maybe one. Zeus is going to come in here to try to deal with the levelers, though, and that's going to be considerably more successful. Now, at the same time, Scorchers are going along the east side of the map, and that... Well... Zeus is coming here on the east side... The, or, sorry, west side. Zeus have not quite attacked. They are moving in, however, and that is going to be... Well, we'll see how that goes, but... It's not going to go well for the levelers, I can tell you that much. One of the levelers has been stunned. It's stun-locked. It is dead. This leveler is down, the other leveler is okay, but Mason here is not in a good spot. Zeus's, however, are retreating, which is pretty effective for them. However, that being said, at the same time, El Torero is attacking very heavily on Clone's northeast side. Getting rid of three metal extractors and a wreck conjurer. Not called rectors anymore, they're called conjurers now. I still think concealer is a better name. I, I My vote is for concealer. My, I think that really completely fits them. But anyway, Clone retaliating along the west side of the map is going to be able to get rid of a Lotus here. The level they're not going to be able to do too much. It's stun locked very quickly. Able to get one shot off. No, not even. That one shot doesn't do much. Zeus is pretty heavily damaged, but not much is in play to actually deal with it. We do have an airplane plant and a Dominatrix coming up. And an airplane plant from Clone at the same time. As well as a Geo plant, so Clone is getting up his massive energy economy. El Toro is not taking advantage of his own Geovent. In fact, no, he has not taken advantage of any of the Geovents. Now, Clone's probably going to be building a pylon from here. Oh, no, it looks like... No, he's building a wind generator line instead of a pylon to get that over to the rest of his base. So, Clone's going to have an economic advantage in about a minute. But El Toro moving his commander forward to break the defenses. Zeus is coming in for retaliation by Clone. And these Zeuses will be able to... Well, they would be able to come in and get rid of the commander, but... It doesn't much matter. Anyway, El Toro going for another harassment, and all these Scorchers are going to be running headlong into this line of Glaives, which actually, I think will work out pretty decently for the Scorchers. Kind of depends on how the Glaives approach, though. The Glaives getting pulled back, that's not... Well... Okay, Clone was paying enough attention. Those Glaives are not the most vulnerable. Vulnerable. El Toro needs to go around the side, though. If he flanks the Glaive line, that would be awesome. But at the same time, whoever... Zeus's and Scythe's coming, but the Scythe has been taken over. It's going to be stunlocked and killed pretty quickly, but hey, that's a lot of money. That's 250... That is 250 metal that Clone will not see again quickly. Same time, though, Raven's coming up for Clone, and... 
looks like Swift's coming up entirely for El Torero. So El Torero just needs to place those Swifts in the right spot, and the Ravens will be able to do nothing. Three so far have been built. A fourth one's on the way. Actually, let's double-check that. Yes, five actually being built. The fourth one was just completed. Fifth one being started. And a fusion reactor as well for Clone. On the other hand, no such power structures for El Torero. He's falling behind in power production. And he actually hasn't even done any overdriving at this point. His metal and energy are even, so he has no room to overdrive. Everything's going into production. And Dominatrix going down to the Ravens. There we go. That Dominatrix is not going to last for much longer. Oh, wow. Actually, no. Dodging the last shot. Just barely surviving the Ravens, and the Ravens actually going down in the process. Well, that was... That was a surprise. That was a major surprise. A couple Glaives coming on the east side as well. Clone trying to get back from this, but... His west side is extremely strong. Eastern side is getting attacked. There is going to be a very powerful fight between... Or a very important fight between these Glaives and Scorchers. Scorchers retreating, losing a Mason, and nice drop in with the Phoenix, having the Glaive army, and the Scorchers move back in, get rid of all the Glaives, and that is entirely in El Torero's favor. Although, he does lose a Metal Extractor and a Mason, in the, actually two Metal Extractors and a Mason in the process. The east side, he has lost a lot. He's lost ground temporarily, but he did get rid of a lot of Clone's army, not quite evening it out. These Zeus's are adding a lot of value to Clone's army, but still... Raptor's also coming in to get rid of all these defenders. This Raptor here has very little chance. Zeus is at the southwest, are going to be able to get rid of this entire base. This is gone, and the Raptors to the west are getting rid of... Oh, I just mentioned what game this is. Wait, anyway, Raptors are going to get rid of all these defenses, no problem. But it is still a... Well, what am I saying no problem? I wasn't looking at the time, sorry. I did some of my stuff. But Dominatrix on the Zeus! Uh, it's not going to work out. The Zeus's are going to die for El Torero, or the ones that El Torero grabbed are going to die. Still, that is... That is still not bad. It's... I mean, the Zeus's are still not paid for by El Torero. They're still clones' payment. So, clones still lost a unit, basically. And... At the same time, Sight's coming in here, trying to get rid of these Ravagers. Doing a pretty good job, too. The Ravagers, however, going to try to get rid of the Stinger. One of them will go down before the Stinger does. But the last one, getting some reinforcements. We'll be able to finish off that Stinger. That's a lot of money, though. That's two Ravagers for a Stinger. That, unless El Torero can actually reclaim this ground, is not worth it. Though the Dominatrix, he might be able to. And Scorch is coming around the back. Not going to be able to do too much damage. That's a lot of metal donated. El Torero is donating a ton of metal to Clone, who is already ahead in metal. And Clone is very much ahead in economy. El Torero's main asset right now are these Dominatrices. That's really what he has going for him right now. If, the, if these dominatrices aren't useful, that's really not going to help him out much. The thing is, El Torero does not have the... He has an economic disadvantage compared to Clone for the most part. Military is on par largely by stealing... I think by stealing Clone's forces. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Pretty sure this does keep track based on current allegiance. So yeah, at any rate, that is definitely valuable. And Clone loses his commander... And the rest of his army just gets taken over by El Toros. El Toros is marching back into Clone's base with Clone's own army, along with some Ravagers' reinforcements. But El Toros will be soon losing this. Oh, Raven's taking out all of the Dominatrices, breaking a bunch of Clone's units free of their control, and the Zeus's resume damage. Although, admittedly, they are further away from El Toros' base. So, at the very least, El Toros got him out of his territory, but now his Ravagers are taking a fair amount of damage. One of the Zeus's does ultimately go down, but these Ravagers are not in a great position for dealing with this. And Clone, with how many Hawks is this? With a dozen Hawks coming through, a Phoenix not even able to get in to get rid of these Glaives, and a dozen Hawks against all the Swifts is... Well, he already killed the Swifts. That's not going to work out very well at all, but this Ravager... This Ravager army not working out too well. The lack of the Dominatrices, that was all that El Torero had going for him. Losing those Dominatrices was huge. I mean, he might he might want to focus on something a bit different. I, I don't know. Dominatrices worked out well against the Zeus's. Slashers, although admittedly a bit tricky to set. You have to set them up nicely, but that would probably work better than Leveler Ravager. Just for their range. Like, I don't see him doing that, though. Admittedly, he is going for Crashers. He is trying to get rid of the anti- he's trying to get the anti-air going. He has four crashers so far. He does 
Obviously, we want to get rid of all these hawks, because that is... And also all the ravens. He gets rid of the ravens, he has some chance of getting this through, but... Ravagers are coming in, and enough of them are getting in, getting rid of the Zeuses. Losing quite a few of their number in the process, but still getting rid of the Zeuses, and actually... Eltaro is not controlling these badly. Moving them around the way he was kind of confused the AI for the Zeus's, and they ended up not hitting most of the Ravagers. I think one or two of the Ravagers may have died, but most of them just got damaged and went through. At this point, a bunch of Conjurers are under threat, but these Glaives are going to be difficult to deal with. There's a Leveler in the back. This Leveler is the only hope that exists, really, against all these Glaives. In the center of the map, I should point out that the center of the map, we do have... We do have a Newton pulling a Raven down, trapping Raven so it can get torn apart by Lotuses, as Ravens were trying to get rid of... Well, got rid of... Eltaro's commander, nothing that mattered a great deal, but the Newton in the middle, a nice little anti-air trap there. And actually, at this point, we do have a bunch of hawks over, the dozen hawks are over in the northeast side of the map. North center side of the map, we do have the ravens and the phoenixes. But that's about it. And that Newton is actually not, well, it's kind of working out. That wasn't a, that was a pretty good idea there. Eltaro was quite clever on that one. I... I think it might have been a better idea to move the Newton a bit further back, just so it's more in range of all this, because this stuff's going to get attacked. You might as well have the Newton pull everything in right into the middle of all this, but another Raven goes down, and these Crashers are making themselves worth their weight and, well, dead Raven corpses at the moment. These Hawks are the big one, though. If those Hawks move in and get killed by the Crashers, that's going to open El Torero up to basically doing whatever he wants in the air. That would be huge. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm sure Clone realizes that. Doesn't want to use the Hawks unless he absolutely has to. And at this point, Eltaro is getting a bunch of Swifts to try to retake air control whatever way he can. Getting his power up, he does now have pretty strong overdrive setup. Or, he would have an overdrive setup if he actually had an overdrive setup. Still waiting on the energy economy to work out, but that will come up. However, Eltaro is... Well, it's getting, starting to get a critical mass of Ravagers. A bunch of Phoenix is coming in and trying to get rid of the Ravagers, trying to just burn them out. That will be somewhat effective, but not sure how effective it will ultimately be. The Ravens, probably more so, but even then, this is quite a lot of Ravagers. And Sai is coming in to try to finish him off. They were definitely softened up by the Phoenixes, but even then, the Ravagers are able to get through. But what damage can they deal inside here? That's the big thing. If they can get rid of the wind generators, that's going to be huge. There are no pylons or anything else to get through this. He did get rid of the caretakers. That is also huge. Two of the caretakers go down. This last caretaker gone down as well. Nicely done. These Ravagers massively reducing clones production. Now he's going to start floating a ton of metal. No caretakers on these buildings. Actually, there's two caretakers around here, but only one of them in range of the airplane plant. The other one, I don't believe, is in range of the Clokibot factory. I can't really tell in here, but... It is... Okay, I can't. I cannot tell. It's still important, though, that... That basically nullifies Clone's economic advantage in the moment. It's only going to be brief. It's only going to be for about a minute or so. But still, that does nullify the economic advantage, because the production... He's reclaiming a bunch of metal into the ether. It, it's not in his storage. He has no room in storage or anything. So, j he's rebuilding that Caretaker. That is important, but the thing is... At this point, Eltaro has given himself some breathing room. Left himself open. He does have to fight against a bunch of Rockos. That is going to be a problem. The Levelers will do a pretty decent job against that, but I think at this point, Scorchers would be the go-to. However, Ravens coming in and getting torn apart by Swifts. They are trying to take care of some of the Masons, but that won't work out too well. And a bunch of the Ravens do go down. All the Ravens go down. The Hawks to finish that off, and there are no Crashers in place to deal with this follow-up the Hawks. So the Swifts are all going down. There will be a few Hawk deaths in the meantime, but for the most part, that was pretty successful to regain air control by Clone. He did, however, lose a lot of his Ravens. That is important. That loss of Ravens is huge. These crashes were not in position to deal with the Hawks. That was unfortunate. I mean, that would have been a great trap just to have them right outside and then move into ambush. Didn't happen, though. A couple sites are in place, though. That is going to be huge. Keep an eye on that, because that's going to get rid of these Masons. That's going to get rid of the Metal Extractors. This is going to be a massive attack by El by Clone right here in the east side of the map. These sides getting rid of the Mason here. Actually, Bisprey's not splitting them up, putting one in the Metal Strider and one in the Mason. They are, however, getting in range of the these defenses, and that's not going to work out too well. And Phoenix gets rid of one of them, does not hit the other one, though. Miraculously for it, but even with that, only able to deal a limited amount of damage. And now Ravager's coming into the center of the map. Another critical mass of Ravager's. Another softening up effect, but these Ravagers now retreating. Eltro not going to bother to lose these for free. Does get rid of a Raven in the meantime, but loses three or four Ravagers. 
and gets his own Hawks as well to try to get rid of all of Clone's. Clone, actually, well, it's pretty even at this point. Looks like Clone is going to be losing air control, but the more important thing is the fact that his ground control is completely gone. Trying to soften up as best he can using these Ravens, but even with that, it's not going to work out too well. Now, it looks like the Phoenix is trying to get around the Crashers and hit the Raptors directly, and that should actually work out. And half of the Raptors are killed pretty much instantly. One of the Phoenixes does get trapped and killed, but the rest of them are okay. The rest of them just get away with that. That was a great attack there, having the Raptor count. Still, Eltro does have a massive army advantage. I mean, he's got five... He has a 5,000 medal advantage over Clone right now in army. Has full air control. It's just a matter of time. I don't know what Clone has planned. He is getting heavy tank. That's not atypical for him. Heavy tank and then shield bot factory is likely afterwards, if going by the last game. But I... I don't know. He's been doing quite well with the Cloakie primarily. And now a bunch of Phoenixes to get rid of all these defenses. Spreading around. One of them gets trapped by the Newton. And the rest of them able to burn all these defenses to the ground. Every single last one of these is gone. Or will soon be burned out. The only saving grace is this Caretaker. But even with the Caretaker, it's going to be tough. This Caretaker actually, well, doesn't quite die. So softened up. Not completely killed. Zeus is about to finish it off. And... Newton trying to keep them away. However, Reaper will be able to finish off that Newton without any issues. And now that Newton gone, Clone has free reign to get through this. And Clone, by the way, has rebuilt his caretakers. He has complete production. He is no longer floating, man. He hasn't been for a while now. But just to follow up on that. And El Toro getting challenged for air control once again. But Clone, bit of a pretender in the skies. As El Toro proves that he is definitely in charge of that. Yeah, that being said, these Phoenixes are being a thorn in El Torero's side, despite the fact that El Torero does have air control and anti-air control. He is, however, now going to start... Looks like he's going to start trying to deal with that. Try to push... No, he's not. Actually, no, these Hawks are going home. They are not going to be trying to get rid of the Phoenixes and Ravens, which is a bit surprising given the amount of damage that was just dealt by them. Though, admittedly, the Caretakers have healed up all of it. And a critical mass of Ravagers being built... I should point out that El Torero has just been focusing on pumping out Ravagers. Ravagers levelers and a few darts here and there, but mostly Ravagers levelers. That's been everything right now for him. While El Torero getting Reapers as well as like, Reapers Rockos. Well, Reapers Rockos, Glaives, and Hawks trying to retake air control. A bit surprised he hasn't gone for ground-based anti-air. At least a little bit. Not entirely surprised. There are a lot of Ravagers and he has to deal with those. But a bit surprised he hasn't gone for that. And that being said, he does have air-based anti-ground and these Phoenixes... Cutting a swath in the Ravager line, not killing anything, but softening it up. However, he doesn't have any follow-up. Or, well, he actually does. Some Ravens are coming in for follow-up. Unfortunately, three Ravens to kill a Ravager is not the most economical solution. Especially now that the Hawks are coming in for El Torero. And the Leveler's coming in along the side to get rid of all these wind generators, to get rid of all this energy economy. And Clone is above ener 200 energy right now, but that's not going to help him too much. More damage on these here, but that's even with that. The Reapers are going to go down very quickly. So they set on fire by the same Napalm Bombers. And the Ravagers... Just way too many Ravagers coming in here. Darts as well just... I guess soak fire. Not much else I can do. And Clone throws in the towel. That is game and... No nukes that time. Well, except for the mini nuke from the Geothermal Explosion. But... Still an interesting game on Eye of Horus. Clone didn't quite get the chance to go into Shieldbot. But, hey. That was still interesting. So... I will be back shortly in just a minute or two with the next game, which will be... Let's see what it is. It is going to be QBA and Flipstip. So the next couple games are going to be games between less, well, lesser known players, but not quite top 10 players, because I figure I might as well showcase more players. So yeah, stay tuned for that, and that will be up shortly.